Hello. Welcome to Richdale Music once again. I'm Pod. Imagine that. Today we're having a little bit of a change. You'll notice things are a little bit quieter. I've decided that we'll come here, we've known each other long enough now, to invite you into the crypt. Here we are, deep in the bowels of the earth, well below Rich Tone Music. This is where I come when the day is finished, when we wave off the last happy customer and all the guys get out all the expensive instruments and jam out some tunes for an hour or two. Then they go off into the town to coffee shops and 7-Elevens and Five and Dimes and they, you know, they laugh, they learn, they live, they love. I might have got that mixed up with um, something I saw on telly. But anyway, what happens is I come down here to this quieter room where I meditate and tease out the tendrils of memory, try to save them for you, to give you some, maybe some little tips for your life with guitars. And today, we're going to be looking at putting on strings. Now, you don't need very much equipment to change a set of strings on a guitar. You will need a set of strings, not surprisingly. Uh, also, one of these, a peg winder or string winder, can be very useful. Uh, this will help you wind up the string much faster once you've got it uh, secured. And they also have a little notch on them, which can be useful for pulling out bridge pins from an acoustic guitar, if that's what you're doing. Uh, these are something I think is extremely useful, which is a pair of decent wire cutters or side cutters. And those can be used also, if you're careful, uh, to remove bridge pins from stubborn acoustic guitars. Uh, and when you finish fitting the string, you'll need it to clip off the end, unless you want to be untidy and leave it dangling, which we hope you don't. Uh, you may also find a guitar tuner is very useful, and a cloth to wipe your finger marks off it when you've done. Uh, in this case we have a rather dirty one which we're going to use, but still it'll be cleaner than my hands, won't it? So, let's put a string on, eh? I have a guitar here, which has conveniently got no strings on, which means half the job's done. Taking the old ones off can be a bit of a pain, but uh, in this particular case, uh, it's one I prepared earlier. I'm just going to get out a set of strings. I'm going to start with the lowest string, which is uh, known correctly as the bottom string. A lot of people uh, quite rightly understand that the bottom string is the one that's furthest from your head, but we, uh, we tend to use the musical term bottom or lower so that uh, it's the lowest sounding string. It's also the fattest, it's the one nearest your chin. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, you need to remove the bridge pin from the bridge there on this acoustic guitar. Sometimes they can be a little stiff, that's when you can use your peg winder notch or your um, string clippers just to lever it out. While we're on that subject, a lot of people wonder is the string supposed to be wedged into this little hole by this little plastic thing? And the answer is no. The only reason that plastic peg is there is to stop this ball end from popping out once you start putting tension on. So it doesn't need to wedge it in, it doesn't need to be very tight or fast. In fact, it's better if it's reasonably uh, slack going in and out. In order to get that in there properly, what I recommend you do is you take your ball end of your string and just put a little bend in it like that. That's all I'm doing, just a little tiny bend. That'll help because what we then do is we push that into the relevant hole on the guitar and put the peg in after it. Now the purpose of that peg is just to stop that ball from coming back out of the hole that's in the top of the guitar. Not to wedge the string in place on the side but just to stop that ball from coming out. If we put a little bend in the string, that ball turns around a corner and the peg will stop it from coming back and that holds the, the string securely in place. Okay, so if you're happy you've got that in there, we need to thread it through the string post. Now, there are some basic useful ideas for this. It's handy to turn the hole in the peg so that it's pointing approximately like that. That's one recommendation. Second thing, how much string should you have wrapped round the head? Should you do anything clever? Should you wind it round back and underneath? And the basic answer is, no, you shouldn't do any of that clever stuff. 
you, there are techniques where you can wind the string underneath itself, but those are useful in certain circumstances. And for most guitars, most circumstances, it's really not necessary, and it just makes them harder to take off when you uh, come to change them. So, how much string to leave on the peg? I recommend that once you've threaded it through like that, you just simply get hold of the string in your hand and about that much. Stick your finger out about that much. Okay? If you've got about that much string, you just you can put your finger on it there, hold it in place, and then turn up the peg. Now then, another point that I'll just mention here. I do get a lot of guitars in where the strings are wound in all kinds of different directions. If you look at what's going on here, as that string is winding up, don't worry about this bit flapping off the end there because we'll clip that in a bit when we don't, we're sure we don't need it. As the string tightens up, the windings are going underneath one another towards the head of the guitar. I'm just turning it gently. I'm not using the peg winder for speed here because you need to see what's going on. Um, there, as you get the end, you can see that the string is wound from the inside of the head. So all of the strings will wind like that, around that side. So the string should be coming off that side. That means that is turning in the correct direction. Sometimes we get them in for restringing and there's one wound up this side and they're all over the place. That's just silly. Don't do that. Once you've got your peg nice and secure on there, that's the string. Now then, another thing that some people miss out is just to give the string a stretch. Why do you give it a stretch? Well, the string is going to stretch anyway, whether you like it or not. And assuming you've got a guitar string in tune, if you just leave it, it will stretch and go out of tune. If you listen to the note here, now if I just get hold of it, about in the middle of the neck, around the 12th fret, and just give a gentle pull like that, it's gone right down. Try again. You see, it didn't take long to get all the stretch out of that string. What that means is that when you tune that string to a particular pitch, it's going to stay there. It's not going to go down of its own accord. It's going to stay there. So, securely on here, securely on here, not too many windings. Stretched in a little bit. You just uh, take a breath while I put the others on. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to take this one a little bit more slowly. I'm just doing exactly the same thing. Slight bend in the string. Pop it in the hole. Right down into the hole. Peg in. Pull it up a little bit so that it just nestles up under the top there. Machine edit a diagonal. Measure approximately that. Hold the string down with a finger there and with whatever method, hand or whatever, wind at the other side. Now just to show you, I've got round to the other side of the peg head here, so these strings that I've been doing on this side are all winding in around that way. You remember when we started, we were going from the inside of the tuner to the out, it's kind of winding like that. That makes sure it's going smoothly over the head and there is another reason why that's quite useful is because, well, number one, that's how they're supposed to be, so just in case there was any doubt, that's how they're supposed to be, but it also means that the strings pass reasonably straightly through the nut. If the strings were at an extreme angle then they could potentially get snagged in the nut when you're tuning, which will give you problems later on. So, a quick tuning check. We can use my beloved fork. Bit of John Walker blued steel there.
close enough for the moment because what we're going to do is we're going to do what we did before a little bit of a stretch grab the string somewhere in the middle give it a bit of a pull you don't have to go mad you might break the string but Now then, we'll check that more closely on a tuner, but we need to get into the right, right street with it, that's all, to start with. So, can you hear that? Now to some people that might be music to their ears, but I don't think we really need that, do you? Take our clippers, just clip it off straight next to the head. Be careful not to catch the string here when you clip it and you just clip away the odd end. There, neat and tidy. All the strings are coming up on the inside of the head and turning towards the outside. You've got maybe one, one and a half, two winds or so around the head. That's plenty for it to grip the head, but not so many that you've got extra strings sitting there doing nothing, just aching to stretch and make your guitar go out of tune. What you can do there is you can then get your electronic tuner and double check it, make sure everything's absolutely bang on in pitch. Now then, if you don't fancy tackling that, and a lot of people don't, then feel free to keep coming into guitar stores and giving people who can be bothered money for doing it for you. I don't mind that, certainly, because it's not really difficult. But I think you know that that's a lot easier than you thought, don't you? Well, look, that's enough for now. Don't forget, the reason that we change strings is because when your strings get a little older, then your guitar sounds terrible. It goes out of tune, it won't stay in tune, it'll sound awful, and the intonation, as we saw the other day, the intonation will go completely wrong. Thank you for listening. It's a lot more peaceful in here, isn't it? Maybe we'll come here again sometime. I'll invite you. Until then, may the forks be with you.